this is certainly what can be described as a long box. It is for Diecast Masters model 85959, and it's the Caterpillar 395 excavator in the mass excavation version. Righto, it's off to the Weybridge we go. And the box weighs six pounds, two ounces, which is 2.78 kilograms. Time to open up the outer shipping carton and see what's inside. And it's the usual nylon bag, and as usual, we open the wrong end first. Do you ever have that feeling that one day, maybe your luck just will change? To the other end we go and open the bag and pull out the tin that's inside. So here it is, and it's impressively long. As you can see, there's a picture of the model on the side of the tin. And on the lid on top, there's the machine loading up a dump truck. On the back of the tin is some technical information. And this machine is a big one, having an operational weight of around 94 tonnes. Let's now take the lid off this big tin. And first out is an instruction sheet, and we'll take a look at that a bit later. And there's also some other bits and pieces. There's a bag containing a pointer and some spare screws. There's a pair of tweezers and there's an operator. Next, we get to our favorite part, which is sticking fingers in holes and lifting out a big piece of foam rubber. There's the model and you can now see why such a big tin is used. And perhaps it's surprising why the model isn't folded up and using a tin of half the size. Anyway, the giant hand crane lifts it out and there's just a couple more bits of packaging to remove. The instruction sheet tells us how to install the operator and it's the only bit of assembly we need to do. So firstly we'll open up the cab door and as soon as we do that it springs shut. So it looks like the operator has arranged whatever he can to avoid going into the cab. But we're not putting up with that nonsense. Just like all operators he gets grabbed by a giant pair of tweezers and he gets forced into the cab. And if he doesn't sit down properly, we'll just keep poking him with the plastic pointer. Back to the Weybridge and the full model comes in at two pounds, six ounces, which is just over one kilogram. As usual, we start underneath and there are nice metal crawler tracks and there's a plastic base plate on the undercarriage. One thing that is different though is the detailing underneath the body. And it includes highlighted rivet heads and also small graphics. Moving on to the crawler track frames and they're modelled well enough. The drive sprocket has got bolt head details. And there are plastic steps attached. Moving upstairs to the cab and there's plastic protection on the windscreen. As well as the usual lights and mirrors. Side on the detailing looks good. With thin frames on the door. And you can see that the inside of the cab is detailed. There's a textured walkway running down the sides of the body and the panels have detailed handles. Many of these open and the overall alignment of them is reasonably good. Also the hinges are painted and not too large. There are some grills represented by graphics and other small graphics add detail. The counterweight has lifting eyes but without holes and there's a sharp cat logo with highlighted bolt heads which gives a pleasing appearance. On the opposite side of the model, there are a lot more grills represented as graphics, and there are more metal grab rails. Again, the opening panel doors have a reasonably good fit. The cat logo and number are very sharp, and at the front, there's a mirror and more handrails. At the boom foot, there are soft hydraulic hoses running to the rams, and they have silver connectors. Looking on top, and there's more intricate detailing in terms of highlighted rivet heads and there are various internal components including metal grab rails. The hydraulic connections to the boom look very good not only because there are soft hoses but also because they have silver connectors at each end. So it all makes for a busy appearance. Along the top of the boom the hoses turn into cast in pipes and then back to hoses again. Detailing on the boom includes highlighted wiring to the work lights. A 
similar level of detailing is found on the mass excavation stick, and that includes more soft hydraulic hoses. There are small graphics, and all of the connection rivets are pleasingly small also. There's also a lifting eye with a hole, and black screws secure the bucket. As you would expect on a mass excavation machine, the bucket is very large, and it has nice teeth and wear plate detailing. <laughs> Out we go onto the Cranes Etc worksite, and the crawler tracks roll very freely by finger, and they're tensioned in the usual way. But what's particularly good is that on a rough surface like this, the tracks bite well, and they roll with very little downward pressure required. The same kind of smoothness also exists in rotating the machine, and it's nice to take it for a spin. A feature of the model is the large number of opening doors, and a couple of them give access into the centre. Some of the hinges for the door seem quite tight, and it's probably best not to push them too far open. That does mean that you can't fully open the panels, but as you can see here, there's some nice engine detailing. There are two more opening panel doors on the opposite side. And again, the plastic pointer gives you some help opening them if you don't have any fingernails. On this side of the machine, you can see large radiator grills. But we're still not done, there's another opening hatch on top. And again, that gives you a view into some engine detailing. Next, we move on to the excavating functions. And the main boom rams are extremely stiff and can hold any pose. And that's a good thing given the heavy weight of the bucket at the end. The model is also stable with the boom and stick stretched out. In terms of height of lift, the boom is compromised. On the real machine, the boom rams open up far enough to lean backwards. So the model's a long way short. Things are much better at closing the boom and stick up. And you can get the model reasonably compact as if it were in a transport configuration. Although in reality the machine would be stripped down for transport. Next we use the patented Cranes Etc digging at depth test. And the model does very well with the boom rams pretty well closed up. Another feature that all excavator models should have is that the bucket is removable. On this model the bucket is held in place by four screws. And after some swift wrist action the bucket comes free. And that means that other buckets or tools could be fitted. <laughs> As usual, this is an excellently presented model by Diecast Masters. The model itself has a high standard of detailing, with some impressive use of paint highlights. It also has many opening doors and panels, and although not perfect, it's implemented pretty well. Overall, this is an impressive large excavator model, and although it's a bit pricey, it has just enough going for it to be rated as excellent. Mm -hmm.